there are three common types of clusters. We'll identify and differentiate one from the other to understand how they function. The main reason why I wanted to focus on the different types of clusters is because there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstanding about how they work, particularly in the context of SQL Server, specifically the database engine. Let's start off with the most common one, failover clusters. Failover clusters are used primarily for high availability, although in later versions of Windows, they've been used for both high availability and disaster recovery. How it works is that only one computer or server in a cluster is serving client application requests. All the other servers are on standby doing nothing, just waiting until the active or the primary server goes down so that they can take over the workload. A bit of a side note, one of the reasons why CTOs or CFOs or CIOs don't like the idea is because all of the standby servers are technically idle assets. The goal is resource maximization. Let's illustrate this graphically. I have two servers in a cluster, both of them attached to shared storage device. The server on top is the one serving client application requests, typically known as an active server. The one below is called a standby. In previous versions of Windows, this is commonly known as the active and a passive server. I try to stay away from that definition primarily because it becomes a bit more confusing, especially when you add more servers and clustered applications in the mix. Let's take, for example, that the clustered application that we're running on top of this is the SQL Server database engine. When a client application connects to the cluster, it uses the cluster server name in the connection string. And the cluster directs it to the server on top, which is currently running the SQL Server database engine. When that particular server goes down, goes offline for whatever reason, say power failure, hardware failure, the client get, uh, gets disconnected from the cluster. And then the cluster decides it will move the clustered application to any of the available standby server. In this particular case, the server down below. Depending on how the client application is written, it can reconnect back to the cluster, again, using the same cluster name. But then it gets redirected to the now new active server, the server down below. Because everything's abstracted, and everything's transparent, the client application does not have any idea at all that the database engine is now running on the server down below. Let's say the original active server is now back online. Maybe you fixed the issue or the reboot cycle completed. The cluster then detects that it is now available and joins it back as an available standby. Now the closer the application will remain where it is until it is moved by an automatic failover caused by a failure like what happened earlier or a manual movement typically issued by an administrator for maintenance purposes. Again, client application does not even know where that workload is running. A common example of failover, cl failover clusters is Windows Server Failover Cluster. This is commonly known in previous versions of Windows as the Microsoft Clustered Services. Throughout the course, this will be the focus of our discussion all the topics that we're going to be talk, uh, talking about in terms of SQL Server, components discussed, planning, architecture, will focus on the Windows Server failover cluster, primarily because this is the platform that the SQL Server database engine is supported to run on top of. So whether we're working with 
your failover clustered instances or availability groups, both of them will focus on Windows Server failover clusters. Now the next type of cluster is a load balanced cluster. Differentiating this with a failover cluster, a load balanced cluster will have all of the servers serving client application requests. From the name itself, is it's distributing the workload across all of the servers in a cluster. Totally unlike a failover cluster where only one server in the cluster is serving client application requests. Again, let's use a graphical representation to explain how this works. I have two servers acting both as active servers in the cluster. And unlike a, a failover cluster, I don't have these servers connected to shared storage because each of these will have a copy of the cluster, clustered application. Depending on the algorithm implemented in load balance cluster, a client application can get redirected to any of the servers in the cluster. Take for instance, a round robin algorithm. The first request will go to the first server. The second one will go to the second, the third will go back to the first one, and so on and so on. At any given point in time, any of the servers will probably have different workloads or serving multiple client, uh, client requests and may have a different workload. You can also configure the load balance cluster to redirect the workload based on how much workload a particular server is hosting so that a less busy server will take on more client application requests compared to a more active server. If one of the servers go down, a taken offline, the cluster will only redirect client applications to the servers that are available in the cluster. An example of a load balanced cluster is Windows Network Load Balancing, the one available from Microsoft. There are third party hardware and software network load balancing uh, technologies available. But as we mentioned earlier, the database engine is only supported to run on top of a failover cluster. However, SQL Server reporting services and analysis services are both supported to run on top of a load balanced cluster. The third type of cluster is called the high performance computing clusters. How this works is that all computers or all servers in a cluster are doing the same task. However, these tasks are broken down into smaller tasks and distributed across all of the servers executing in parallel. Let's take an example graphically again of how this thing works. Similar to the network load balance cluster, a high performance computing cluster will have all of the servers in the cluster serving client application requests. On top of that, each server may have access to a subset of all of the data that the client application uh, the client application will request. How this works is when a client requests data or performs tasks on the cluster, the cluster will then break down the request and then slice it across multiple servers in the cluster and distribute the workload. Imagine this, if the client application does a select star of 5 billion rows. The cluster will then decide how to distribute serving 5 billion rows. Say, for example, 2.5 billion on one server and the other half on the other server. When the processing is done, the cluster then collects all of that information and the control node will then send that response back to the client application. An example of a high performance computing cluster is introduced in Windows HPC server or was formal, formerly known as the Windows cluster server, cluster compute server. 
Another example of this is Microsoft's appliance version called the Analytics uh, Processing System, or what was formerly known as Parallel D Data Warehouse. How it works again is that there are multiple servers in the cluster, and then the workload is broken down into smaller pieces or smaller chunks and redistributed across all of the servers for them to process it parallelly. 